It's time for your weekly financial workout with your elite personal trainers, Ryan and Bob Payne, guiding you on how to build a stronger and more robust financial plan. So get ready. We're about to pump you up live from the greatest city in the world. This is No Pain, No Gain. Good morning. It's No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. I'm your host, Ryan Payne, president of Payne Capital Management along with Chief Investment Officer, the man with the plan, and happens to be my father, Bob Payne. Good morning, Dad. What's shaking this fantastic weekend before Thanksgiving? Well, looking forward to coming up and seeing you, Rye. It's uh, investigated all the offices in Florida and everything's doing well, so it's now time to come north and visit the New York office. I know you've been hard at work down there, firing up the jacuzzi every night. Like I always say, it's good to be Bob. <laughs> Well, we have a fantastic show this morning to help you on your path to financial freedom. We're going to talk today about emotions and investing. Let's face it, money is emotional. A lot of the decisions we make when it comes to our finances have nothing to do with logic, but everything to do with how we're feeling. Bob and I are going to discuss how to keep your feelings in check so you can make the best decisions when it comes to your money. We're going to talk about retirement and farming. Just like many of our ancestors lived off the land growing crops in agrarian societies, we're going to discuss how growing your nest egg and living off those assets in retirement is a lot like farming. And along with this week's financial pornography, we're going to talk about some things that are out there in the financial news, financial media you need to stay away from. And we have on our colleague, certified financial planner, Michelle McKinnon this morning for our spotlight segment. And she's going to talk about a real retirement case that she worked on this last week and some of the mistakes this couple is making with their planning so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own financial planning and investing. So let's hop right to it. Let's talk about emotional decision-making. As much as we like to think we make decisions based on logic and facts, the reality is that emotions usually play a huge role for us in our financial decision making process. Bob, you know, what type of emotions do you typically find drive our financial decisions? The old saying on Wall Street, Rye, is that the market is driven by just two simple emotions. Wanna take a guess? Fear and greed. Which one is more dangerous? Ooh, I have to say probably I don't know, that's a tough one. I think fear is actually probably a greater detriment as an investor. Yeah, I think fear is uh, something that really compounds the decision-making process. People are more afraid of losing money than they are anxious to outperform or make more money. So they, they really fear, you know, I think a lot of us, and I think you fear the downside more than you do the upside. Well, I think the best example of that is right now. I mean, it's, you know, we figure we've been in a bull market now for an almost nine years running. And, you know, we're still kind of shell-shocked from 2008 when the market collapsed and we probably have a lot more cash sitting on the sidelines than we should, right? I mean, we probably have 100000 200000 maybe even $300,000 just sitting there earning almost nothing because we're so afraid that that other uh, shoe's going to drop. Yeah, well, you have the one side of your brain that tells you, you know, over time, the markets always go higher, but then that emotional side takes over. And in 2008, 2009, you know, you sold out of the market, you put money in money market funds, you took your 401k portfolio and put it into the stable value fund, and you think you're secure. But now you have investments that have low risk and low return and a low probability of getting to your goals. Yeah. And you're only getting closer to retirement to put the pressure on top of that. Um, well, where does greed come in, Rye? Why is greed such a bad uh, emotion? Well, I think greed, well, it comes down to risk. And right now I see that as well. You may have in your portfolio a lot of money in the markets. It's been riding up and riding up. In the back of your mind, you're thinking, I know I need to start to work on the risk in my portfolio, but it's really hard to do that when the wind's at your back, Bob. You know, It's so hard when things are doing so well to say, I need to take some profits here and re-diversify my money. Yeah. What I see happening all the time is people are selling what's not working. So they're selling low to buy what is working. So they buy high at the exact opposite of what you should do. And the worst thing about that is when the market does finally correct, we love this quote, use it a lot. When the tide goes out, you can see it's been swimming naked. <laughs> that's when it's going to hurt. It's not going to hurt until that market pullback happens. That's why we talk a lot about having a proactive investment strategy versus a reactive. And you know, for pain capital management, Bob, it really comes back to what you designed 
back in the late in the mid 80s really our a to b process really to help you to guide your emotions and stay invested over the long term yeah my first experience rai was uh, with investors was that you would you know put a portfolio together and at the first sign of anticipation or fear of anything going wrong people would liquidate or panic out of the market waiting to see what would happen Right. So we came up with a device to control those emotions. Very simple exactly. device. We call it A to B. So how does, does A to sense? B work to yeah, but how does A to B work to keep people's emotions in check? Well, it's it's all about having a process that's goal driven versus event driven. You know, and, and look, I don't blame you for being fearful today. We have North Korea, the Middle East, you have a you know, a, a new administration, we have interest rates supposedly to go up. There's lots of things to be fearful of. So it's very right. difficult to control your emotions. So we created this device to do just that. And so what you do is you break it down to specific goals. And most people have the same great goals of life, right? Like what, for example? Yeah, well, most of us, we want to be able to retire comfortably. And you know, mm-hmm. we always say it, but you want our money to outlive us, not outlive our money, which I think is probably number one, especially when it comes mm-hmm. to retirement planning. Well, you know, you take uh, other goals like education, right? right? So you have a child or a grandchild you want to educate. You know exactly the day they're going to go to college. You know exactly the day you're going to have to write that check, you know, to the university. That's a specific goal. So you know how much money you have to invest for that goal today. You know what rate of return you need to achieve. That's A to B. That's investing based on a specific goal. So if you take all of your financial goals and break it down into strategy, then it takes the emotions out because now you have control versus letting the markets control you. Yeah, a key word here, Bob, which is very, very rarely used in the investment world, and that's discipline. <laughs> it, yeah, it's the about, other thing, you know, right, the one thing we never find on Wall Street is common which, sense. Right, common sense and discipline are lacking in, in a big way. And that's really the key, because the problem with markets are the best time to buy is always when we don't want to buy. It's always mm-hmm. when the news is bad, emotions are running high, and fear is high. And on the flip side, the best time to sell is when things are going great, and it's the hardest time to sell. So what you really need to think, and if you're thinking there right this morning, I have no discipline when it comes to my portfolio. I've saved, I've got this nest egg, but there's no discipline in place. There's no goal-based strategy. Here's your shot to put that in place. If you're one of the next 10 callers and you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan, utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over 40 years. And what that entails is we're going to look at everything. We're going to build you your own customized portal, one login, see all of your assets updated on a daily basis, and we're going to look at what you're doing right now. Is all your accounts titled properly? Do you need to update your state? We're going to look at that. How about taxes? Are you optimizing taxes? Are you paying unnecessary taxes? We're going to review that for you. Then what we're going to do is we're going to look at all those investments and break it down into a simple three-page x-ray, and we're going to look at diversification. What risks do you have in your portfolio? Do you have concentrations of risk you don't know about? We're going to point out all the pitfalls in your portfolio. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? We're going to break down all the costs, including those hidden costs you don't know you're paying, and see if we can reduce the cost on your portfolio. And we're going to look at income. Income is so critical in retirement. Are you optimizing it? Can you increase the income on your portfolio? Bob and I are going to show you how to do that. Then we're going to tie it all together into one financial portal. We're going to determine, is your money going to outlive you or are you going to outlive your money? Utilizing strategies now we've worked on again for over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. All you have to do is give us a call or text us at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 752 Six six nine two. If you're one of the next ten callers and you've saved over two hundred thousand for your retirement, our team will create for you your own three hundred and sixty financial portal. Simply text the number or call eight four four Plan NYC. That's eight four four seven five two six six nine two. This is Bob Payne. This is Brian Payne. We are no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. From your first encounter with the Payne Capital Management family, you'll notice a difference. First of all, the team doesn't represent any institutions. They represent their clients. That's the power of being independent. 
they really separate themselves from the large brokerages and how important their personal relationship is with you, the client. You can expect frequent communication about your plan from the team. You'll have the freedom to select top investment strategies, not just one particular product. And as a fee-based financial advisory group, Payne Capital Management embraces its fiduciary responsibility to help you make decisions that serve your best interest and no one else's. See what the PCM difference is all about. Call today for a complimentary review. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. It's time for the weekly No Pain, No Gain Market Update with a team at Payne Capital Management here in New York City. Hey, good morning. It's Bob Payne, Chief Investment Officer and Managing Director here at Payne Capital Management. And the day after the market set a new record for the longest run of low volatility, the market became, of course, more volatile. Now, you and I never mind volatility when the market goes up. We only notice when the volatility is on the downside. The main driver of this year's bull run have been earnings. And as the majority of companies have now reported, I'm happy to tell you that third quarter earnings were up over 9% for the quarter. Now, when you couple that with the double digit advances of the first and second quarter, we now have the strongest year in earnings since 2011. But as earnings season winds down, investors' attention will shift from earnings to news. And as Benjamin Graham, the famous security analyst, once said, in the short run, the market is a voting machine. In the long run, it's a weighing machine. And we saw the voting machine in action this week as investors voted early and sold the market down on the belief that tax reform would stall, only to run the market back up when the House passed its version of the tax reform bill this past Thursday. So expect more of the same as tax reform is now in the hands of the U.S. Senate. So my message of the week is don't fall in love with the downside Ignore the noise at the voting booth, focus on your goals, stay invested, and most importantly, buy the dips. If you want to own your own 360 financial portal that not only gives you a plan, but keeps you on plan to your path to financial freedom, give us a call or text us at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is Bob Payne, and we are No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. We told you earlier that Bob Payne is Managing Director of Payne Capital Management. This means he oversees all the portfolio designs and financial planning strategies for the firm. For 40 years, he's worked to change the way the financial industry approaches financial planning. He turned away from the traditional Wall Street sales pitch and pioneered a new approach to retirement planning using goal-oriented, customizable plans that better fit your individual needs. Reach out to Bob and the team for a complimentary review by calling 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know in the winter of 1780, it was so cold that the New York Harbor froze over? You could have walked from Manhattan to Staten Island on the ice. Let's hope it doesn't get that cold ever again. Although, if you had some sled dogs, it could do wonders for the commute. Anyway, keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. Mush! It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. And one of Bob and I's biggest initiatives at Payne Capital Management is common sense education. Financial planning should not be over your head. There's way too much information out there. We want to give you practical advice that you can use right away that'll help you with your financial planning. And our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement, Will the Government Inherit Your IRA, is available for free. Simply just text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Again, that's the word BULLISH, to 555-888. 888, and you can download our newest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So download the guide, 555 888, and you can get some strategies to make sure that you're optimizing taxes. In this segment, what we want to discuss is the retirement farm. And Bob, you spent many years working on a farm, didn't you? 
Well, actually, son, that was our yard, and um, yeah, I used to mow the lawn. <laughs> I actually don't remember that. I remember you hiring someone who used to mow the lawn, actually. Oh, that's right. I bought this beautiful lawn mower, and somebody made me an offer I couldn't refuse, and since everything's for sale, I sold it. And after that, it was easier to let somebody else cut the lawn. That's true. Your famous nickname, Bob the Master Delegator. <laughs> Focus well, anyway, on what you're good at, it. I always say. <laughs> I like that. I like that. That's good advice. Sound advice. Well, anyway, let's talk about if, if you did work on a farm or you didn't know anything about farming, let's talk about some of the similarities between farming and a good retirement plan. And the first thing I can think about would be diversity of crops. How do you correlate that to an investment portfolio? Well, just like in farming and the same thing in your portfolio, you never bet the farm. You know, the best example I can give you, Rye, is uh, Ireland in the 1850s. One of the reasons why you're a U.S. citizen today as opposed to an Irish citizen was because the Great Potato Famine drove our family out of Ireland and to the U.S. And we were one of the lucky million that came here as opposed to the million that died. Yeah, and that's kind of similar in a little bleak <laughs> way with your portfolio that if you have all your eggs in one basket, it's a term you've heard pretty often, when that goes out of favor, you're out of luck. And I see that a lot right now. We talk about this a lot right now, Bob. It's just the, the over concentration of large cap US stocks in your portfolio could be very detrimental when that finally goes out of favor. That's not diversification. It's no different, Rye, than when you had all your money in tech in 2000, or people were speculating in real estate in Florida in 2006. Whenever you over-concentrate, one of two things are going to happen. You're going to make a lot of money or you're going to lose a ton of money. Why take that risk? Yeah, and I think the one misconception is is you don't want everything in your portfolio going up at the same time. You know, It's a big fallacy because the problem is if everything go is going up at the same time, Bob, it's going to go down at the same time. The ideal is you want to have things in your portfolio that aren't working. And a good example of that would be back in 2016, or even more like 2015, international was very, very out of favor and was a great time to add money there from places that were doing well in your portfolio, like, again, large cap US growth stocks. Yeah. I mean, you go back 30 years and that's where we really learned about diversification was that first big bear market we experienced in 87 when the market dropped 35% in a little over two days. If you didn't have a bond portfolio that went through the roof, and you didn't have any profits to harvest, you didn't have any money or any any firepower to take advantage of the drop in the market. So the whole idea of diversification is to stay invested, but also to make money. And the best way to outperform is to buy what's out of favor with dollars from something that's in favor. And that's what diversification is truly about. Yes. And the best way to do that, because I mean, the problem is you probably have, you think you're diversified because, hey, I have four different brokers and they have lots of different mutual funds in their accounts with lots of different names. And this is what I love about our 360 portal. Once we load everything into one place, so you look, you can look at everything, what we're gonna find is you have tons of different funds with lots of different names, but they own the same stuff. They all own mm -hmm. Microsoft, they own Apple, they all own you know Facebook, all the big names, Amazon, and there's no real diversification. And as that keeps concentrating, as, that, as those parts of the market keep going up, you become less and less diversified. And it's kind of like you're sitting on a time bomb basically with your portfolio. It's not just a time bomb. It's, it, the big problem is sometimes you don't know what you don't know. And if you don't have a portfolio to compare it to, so it's like what I like about the 360 portal is it compares your current portfolio to our portfolio that shows the gaps. So if you don't have any small cap stocks or mid cap stocks international, it reminds you every single day. And that's the beauty of it. You know, the other problem I see, right, is people invest in things that are illiquid. In other words, you can't sell it. Why would someone invest in something like an illiquid real estate investment trust when you can buy liquid REITs? all day long yeah. on the New York Stock Exchange. It's a good point. It's kind of like if I'm on a farm, I might have very valuable land, but if you know I can't sell it, I can't live off of it. And that's one of the big things as you get close to retirement and go into what you're saying, Bob, is a lot of these investments that are sold out there, like these private placement REITs or annuities are a good example of that too, mm -hmm. are very, very illiquid, meaning it's very hard to sell them. Whereas if you have a liquid investment portfolio, you can sell and have cash in three days. That's a big, big issue when you're getting close to retirement because the closer you are to being dependent on your money, the more dependent or more easily available you want your money to be to you. And a lot of those investments, 
The commissions tend to be very high and they tend to be very illiquid. You know, right. It's insult to injury. You know, but basically you don't understand risk until there's hindsight, right? Risk is understood better in hindsight than it is in foresight. And then right. once you realize that you made a bad investment, then then to be told that you can't sell it, that's insult to injury. And I see that happening, you know, with these annuities, with non-traded REITs. And it's not just that. It's, you know, they generate K-1s, which you have to, you know, pay a CPA every year. You know, have to pay additional fees to your CPA. And a lot of times these K-1s come in late. So again, yeah. illiquid investments, I think, we should just call them insult to injury investments. <laughs> you coined a new phrase. That's a new Bobism for the show this morning. And I think that's something to remember too, because a lot of times you may be pitched or you may own an annuity where you get a guaranteed income stream for life, which that word guarantee, it's a very dangerous word to use. But remember, to get something, you give something up. So a lot of times you may get an income stream, but you have to give up your principal. So these are the questions you need to be asking. And when you're looking at building your portfolio for retirement, you want to start thinking about liquidity, not less liquidity. You know, I have a question for you, Rye. When you ask someone on a scale of one to 10, how organized they are financially, what do they typically say? I'm going to say most people probably feel like, you probably feel like you're a four or five. You kind of know what everything's doing, but you know you don't have the best grasp that you possibly could have. And when you ask them the follow-up question, where would you like to be? What do they tell you? Wouldn't we all want to be a 10, Bob, with knowing what our finances are doing? I don't know. If you apply that common sense rule, I think so. So if you'd like to rank a 10 in your financial life, if you'd like to have all of your financial documents and data organized and simplified, all you have to do is be one of the next 10 callers. If you've saved over 200000 for retirement, my son, Rye, and I will create for you your own customized 360 financial portal. That means all your passwords and security questions are embedded. You don't have to worry about remembering them or finding them. Every brokerage account, insurance policy, your entire net worth in one financial portal, organized, simplified, and with the highest degree of safety. And if you are one of the next 10 callers, here's exactly what you can expect from us. We're going to review all of your investment strategies. We're going to break down your portfolio to the three most critical elements of successful investing, diversification, fees, and income. We're going to make sure that you don't miss any of those critical categories that are going to help you outperform in the future. We're going to look for all those hidden costs and fees, and we're going to optimize the income that your portfolio should be generating. And finally, we're going to tie it all together into your own personal 360 financial portal. It'll give you a window into your financial future. Your wealth projection will update daily in real time and answer that age old question, not just today, but every day for the rest of your life. Will you outlive your money or will your money outlive you? Utilizing strategies our family's been perfecting now for over four decades. We want to help take your family from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values, and with the least amount of risk and as much certainty as a fiduciary can provide. So don't waste time. Give us a call or text 844 PLAN. NYC, that's 844-752-6692. One login, look at everything, a full financial review at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Give us a call or text right now at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is no pain, no gain. Financial Radio. At Payne Capital Management, we understand how crucial Social Security is to your retirement. However, Social Security is confusing, and there are many ways to claim your benefits. That's why we've developed 10 strategies for maximizing your Social Security benefits. If you text the word BULLISH to 555-888, we'll send you a link to download your free copy. Simply text the word BULLISH to 555-888 and you'll receive a link to register. The social security system is complex. Make sure you're making the most of your benefits. Get started today by texting the word BULLISH to 555-888. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H to 555-888. Text the word BULLISH to 555-888. It's time for Financial Pornography of the Week. This is where Bob and I scour the daily financial news and call out the biggest 
offenders of offering obscene and profane financial guidance to help you protect yourself from making any ill-advised financial decisions. Bob, what in the financial media this week was just so egregious that you had to bring it up today on this show? Well, first of all, Ryan, do you realize how many years ago it was that we found out about the Ponzi scheme of all times from Bernie Madoff? You know how long ago that was? I'm going to say it was like 2009 is my guess. So nine years ago, eight years ago. Yeah, nine years. Eight, eight to nine years ago. We're, we're celebrating the anniversary of that. But here's the thing that was most shocking. How many new Ponzi schemes did we find a year? I'm going to guess, because I've seen the show American Greed, it has to be at least a dozen a year. How about a dozen a month? Wow. That's incredible. Wow. Yeah, I found, I found this blog. It's called the Ponzi Scheme Blog. And they list every Ponzi scheme that they find each month. And it's 12 a month on average. How's that possible? You would think in this day and age, you know, with so much awareness after what happened with that whole Madoff scandal that uh, it would be very hard to even pull off a Ponzi scheme in, in this day and age. Well, the one that they're finding a lot of is when someone comes to you and asks you to transfer your IRA rollover, your 401k, your IRA, your Roth IRA into a self-directed IRA so that you can invest in some of these non-registered securities. So in a lot of cases, you're going to have people who are excellent at scamming you out of your money. And they may sound smart, they may sound good, they have excellent soft skills, but when somebody asks you to do something that no other advisor asks you to do, that should be a big red flag. Yeah, especially, again, we talked about this in the last segment, is just this whole realm of more exotic type of investments that aren't straightforward. And those illiquid REITs, you may own one, or you may have been pitched one of these in the last couple of years, they just turn out to be an absolute disaster. And in this case, it sounds like you know you have money not even going towards any sort of investment, just into another person's pocket in the uh, illusion of being an actual investment, which is kind of crazy. I have great advice for you today. If it sounds too good to be true, it usually is. <laughs> Common sense. I'm loving it. Right. So in the world of financial pornography, what did you discover this week? Well, I went back all the way to June 20th of this year, in the beginning of the mm -hmm. summer, and I went to USA Today and they had a tagline that said, plunging oil prices could go even lower for even longer. And mm. that's kind of been the mantra for a lot of this year is oil prices lower for longer. And Bob, do you remember where oil prices were back in June of 2017 of this year? Well, I know we were bouncing down around $30 a barrel. Not that low, $43 no, that low. Okay. a barrel roughly. So, I mean, it was, it was low, but it wasn't that low. And at that time... The consensus was, again, lower for longer because we felt that American producers are pumping so much oil at a furious pace that OPEC was not going to be able to extend their production cuts. There's going to be a glut of oil supply to the markets, which is going to keep prices lower. Now, this is the consensus. This is what we call conventional wisdom. Everybody believed this. So if you would have read this article back in June... You know, what do you think would have happened to oil prices at $43 a barrel till today after reading this article, Bob? What, well, what would you have felt? everybody would have expected it to do opposite of what it actually did. So what happened to oil prices since June? About 50% up. Up, not 50%. <laughs> yeah, right. They did exactly the opposite of what the experts predicted. And, you know, there again, they were making decisions based on anticipation of certain events. But, you know, that's human nature. You make predictions on the future based on your most recent experience. So you're going to find when markets trend lower, even the experts, the so-called experts, tend to predict that that trend will continue. And that's why it becomes so difficult to invest. Yeah. I mean, who would have guessed that oil just hit above 57 in the last week or so? That's 30% higher than it was in June. And a lot of that move just happened within a four or five week period. So I think two lessons here when you're thinking about your portfolio and your investing, whatever the conventional wisdom is, you know, what everyone says, oh, clearly this market's going to do this. Clearly the, the market's going to go higher or clearly we're going to have a correction. Don't trust it. You know, there's a good chance that's exactly what's not going to happen. And also another important thing is, and this is why we talk about time in the market, not timing the markets, that move in oil that went up only happen in a very short period of time. So the point is, you need to have your money invested in a lot of different things because when the market finally moves, your money already has to be there. You can't jump on the train after it's already run away. Yeah, right. That's just core financial pornography. 
whenever something is, you know, front of mind, they bring on the analysts, they bring on the bears and they just, you know, hound that idea day in and day out. Once the market rallied, where were all those prognosticators? Where were all those analysts that were bearish on, on oil? You don't see them on financial pornography channels any longer. Now they're on to something else, something else to create fear in the hearts of investors. Or even scarier, the same people that told you to, that oil was going down five, six months ago are now telling you that oil's going up. <laughs> so it's, you know, it's kind of like uh, this schizophrenic, uh, you know, advice that you get from the financial media outlets. And that's why it's so important that you need to have a plan, you need to have a discipline that's tied into your goals, not what we think is going to happen next in the markets, not with anticipation. So if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I need to get my finances in order, I need a plan that's goal-based, that's going to get me to retirement or through retirement, here's your shot to do it. If you're one of the next 10 callers, you have over $200,000 saved for retirement, Bob and I will run for you our total financial master plan. We'll do it with no obligation or cost. That's a full review that's going to look at your whole financial picture. We will build you a portal, one password, where you can look at everything in real time, all your investments, all your liabilities. We're going to look at everything that's going on in your financial life. We're going to look at your portfolio, break it down onto a three-page x-ray, and we're going to look at your diversification. How diversified are you over all your portfolios? Are you taking too much risk? What portfolio pitfalls do you have? Bob and I are going to point those out to you. We're going to look at fees. Are you being overcharged on your investments? You probably are and don't know it. We're going to show you all the hidden costs in your portfolio, in those high-cost annuities, mutual funds, illiquid REITs. We're going to break it down and see if we can reduce the cost on your portfolio and we're going to look at income. Income is so critical and so much more reliable when it comes to your retirement plan. We're going to show you how to increase or optimize the income on your portfolio. And then finally, we're going to tie it all together into one total financial master plan, and we're going to determine are you going to outlive your money? Is your money going to outlive you? Utilizing strategies now our family's worked on for literally over 40 years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Our appointments are limited, so don't miss out. Give us a call or text 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers and you've saved at least 200000 for your retirement, our team will create for you your own personal 360 financial portal. Just give us a call or text 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is The Pain Family, and we're No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. With a constantly changing financial landscape, having a written, customized plan is more important than ever. In New York City, turn to the team at Payne Capital Management. Call 844-PLAN-NYC to schedule a complimentary financial review. That's 844-PLAN-NYC, 844-752-6692. Find out how to better prepare for your financial future. 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. Time for some New York City trivia. Did you know pinball was once banned in the city? It was in place until 1978. Speaking of pinballs, if you're tired of watching your accounts bounce all over the place, you should keep listening to No Pain, No Gain. It's No Pain, No Gain, Financial Radio. And one of the goals at Pain Capital Management for Bob and I is to cut through the noise. There is so much information out there and a lot of bad information. We want to give you the most common sense financial information so you can make the best decisions about your investing and retirement. And we put together our newest guide, The Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want that to happen. So you can text for a free copy to 555-888, the word bullish. That's B-U-L-L-I-S-H. Text the word BULLISH to 555-888. You can get a free copy of our latest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So take the time to text the word BULLISH 
to 555-888. And if you want to learn a little more about myself and Bob, you can check us out on the World Wide Web. Go to bebullish.com. That's bebullish.com. And yes, Bob's hair is real for all those inquisitive minds. (laughs) (laughs) And if you have a question for myself or Bob, you can always email us questions at bebullish.com. That's questions at bebullish.com. Bob and I will answer your questions directly. And if it's a really good question, we will answer it right here on the show. And as every week, we got a couple good questions this week. Bob, the first one is for you. Randall, who's in Franklin Lakes, New Jersey, writes in. He writes in, Bob, I'm in my mid-50s and I don't have much saved for retirement at all. But I own my own business, and I'm having a huge year. Way to go, Randall. Best I've ever had so far. I'll have some big profits that I can invest for retirement. Where do I start? Well, Randall, first of all, congratulations on your successful business. And secondly, you're sending this email at the right time. You know, because the most important thing that you can do is put money away for retirement in a tax advantage investment. There's only one legal tax shelter available to all of us in this country, and that's retirement plans. Now, you can do something as basic as an IRA or a Roth IRA, where you can put away $5,500 and deduct that against your income tax. But you're over 50, so you can actually put in $6,500. Better yet, Randall, you could establish a 401k plan where you could invest $18,000. And because you're over 50, you can also add an additional $6,000 as what the government calls a catch-up provision. And next year, that 18,000 goes up to 18,500. But since you own your own business and you're in your mid-50s, what I would recommend is to talk to a pension consultant and establish a profit-sharing plan in addition to the 401k. This would allow you, Randall, to put away as much as 50 or 60,000. And better yet, we could look at a cash balance plan, which would allow you to contribute close to 300000 into a retirement plan, and that's almost ninety dollars to $100,000 you would save in taxes. So, Randall, excellent time to send us an email. Excellent question. And now's the time to act. You've got a couple of weeks left. Don't hesitate. And that's actually a good point to bring up since we're so close to the end of the year. Any contributions that you need to make to your retirement plan. If you're an employee specifically, they need to be done by the end of the year. So if you've had a couple of nice bonuses here at the end of the year, make sure they get in your 401k now because you can't do it come 2018. So Rye, we got a, another email question from Beth in Hartford, Connecticut. And she says, my parents bought a whole life insurance policy for her daughter when she was born. And we've been paying for the policy ever since they passed away. Now her daughter's about to graduate college. She wants to know from you, should she keep paying on the policy or should she get rid of it? She says it's not cheap. This is a very, very common occurrence. You probably do have a whole life insurance policy that you started when you were younger, maybe for yourself or one of your kids, or you may inherit it from a parent. That's a question we get pretty often. And the question really is, is it really worth to have this policy still? And a lot of times you may have a significant amount of what we call cash value built up in this policy. And the question is, first and foremost, do I need a death benefit? So let's just, for an example, let's say you're you're retired right now and you have a nice nest egg built up and you're living off that nest egg. You might not need that insurance anymore. Well, it might be time to say, I could use the cash value and live off of it as opposed to keeping it in that policy. Now, the other thing you want to look at with any sort of whole life policy that you've had for a long time is have what we call an in-force illustration run on that policy. What that's going to tell you is what kind of premiums you need to pay to keep the policy in place. But if you stop paying premiums, what's going to happen to your cash value? Because a lot of times, the cash value is going to get eaten up by the insurance costs, and then that policy is just going to go away. I had a client had a policy like that recently, Bob. He had about eleven grand in that policy, and all the insurance costs were going to gobble that up in a couple of years. I said, "Cash in the policy, take the ten grand, and take your wife on a nice vacation." Oh, that's nice. Where'd they go? I don't know if he took my advice or not, but that's what I told him to. <laughs> hey, it's always nice to find uh, ten, eleven thousand dollars laying around that you don't need uh, any longer for a specific goal. You know, right? That's what I love about our our three hundred and sixty financial portal. The other day, a client and I were setting up their portal. 
And we had a whole list of insurance policies that he had set up, you know, while he was building his career, building his net worth. So we put the first policy in, that one had expired. We put the second policy in, that one had expired. And he didn't even know. So a lot of times what you'll find is you have insurance policies where you paid the premium or you're not paying the premium any longer and the internal costs eat up the cost of the insurance, just like you did with your client. But I think that Inforce Illustration is such a valuable tool because instead of getting a sales pitch from the insurance salesman that sold you the policy, you get an opportunity to see real numbers. You get to compare apples to apples. You know, I mean, I've had great experience with getting Inforce Illustrations directly from the insurance company. And it's pretty simple, right? I mean, all you have to do is make a phone call or go online. That's a good point. Go right to the insurance company. Don't go to the insurance salesman that sold you the policy. That way you can get the real numbers. In fact, if you want to have an you know, Enforced Illustration done, we have people in our office that could walk you through it, do the phone call with you to make sure you get the right type of illustration. Because you want to find out, I always call it in the worst case scenario, what is this policy going to do? You want to, you want to know under harsh conditions, is this policy going to survive or not? That's a real way to, to assess if it's a good policy or one you want to get rid of. You know, never surprised me, Rye, that when insurance companies come out with a better insurance product, they never call the people they sold insurance to in the past to tell them we got a better deal. <laughs> That's right. So if you're sitting there with a, a pile of insurance policies that you're not certain if they're still performing or that they're still a good deal, or if you're contributing to a retirement plan and you're not certain if there could be something better, What we'd like to offer, if you're one of the next few callers and you saved at least 200,000 saved for retirement, Ryan and I will analyze that for you. So if you're one of the next few callers, here's what you can expect from us. We're gonna review your taxes. We're gonna review your estate plan. You know, an estate plan isn't any good if the investments aren't titled properly. So one of the things that we do with our 360 financial portal is we show you how much money's in your name, how much is in your wife's name or your spouse's name. So critical to have investments titled properly, especially your beneficiaries. And we're going to look at all of your investments. You know, we have so many statements that come in, you know, you sit there and you're sitting on the edge of your desk, you know, you know, you need to go through them, but it's really a problem and it's a drudgery. So here, throw them in a shopping bag, make an appointment with us. We'll put it into your own personal 360 financial portal. So then you can just go online and see at any time how well you're doing, how well you're diversified, you know, what part of your portfolio is outperforming, what's your targeted asset allocation. Are your assets positioned properly to overcome inflation and taxation in your lifetime? We're going to look at diversification, fees, and income. We're going to generate a specific report just to identify those issues for you personally. And finally, we're gonna tie it all together into one specific wealth projection, which will answer that age old question. Are you going to outlive your money or will your money outlive you? Utilizing strategies that my son and I have been perfecting now for over 40 years. We wanna help take your family as we have all of our families from your financial point A to your point B, your goals, your dreams with your values Do it with the least amount of risk and with as much certainty as fiduciaries, as certified financial planners can provide. Don't waste time. Call or text us now at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. It's a full review, full analysis, 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. We have a couple slots left take advantage, call or text us at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. This is No Pain, No Gain Financial Radio. Here's this week's Spotlight on No Pain, No Gain. It's Ryan Payne, Bob Payne, no pain, no gain. And one of Bob and I's biggest initiatives here at Payne Capital is education. There's a lot of noise out there. We want to cut through it and give you the best, most practical advice when making decisions about your investing and retirement. And we put together our latest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want them to. So if you want to get a copy of this free Go ahead and text the word BULLISH, that's B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 555-888. Again, that's the word BULLISH, B-U-L-L-I-S-H, to 
888. You can get our latest guide, Truth About Taxes and Retirement. Will the government inherit your IRA? We don't want your IRA to be an IOU to the IRS. So text us at 555-888, the word bullish. And now it's time for our spotlight segment, my favorite time. Each week, we dissect a real financial plan and uncover what we call the flaws or pain points, that's P-A-Y-N-E for the record, so you can avoid the same mistakes with your own planning and investing. And we have a very special guest today, my colleague and Bob's colleague, certified financial planner, Michelle McKinnon. Good morning, Michelle. Thanks for being on the show. Good morning. Thank you for having me. It's always an honor and a pleasure, I'll tell you. Not only did I sit next to you, but now to spend the weekend chatting with you. It's I mean, like, Ryan, you are in luck, let me tell you. <laughs> I'm a lucky, lucky man. Well, you worked on a case this past week. Why don't you give us the rundown and just talk about some of the mistakes that you saw with some of the, the strategies that were being deployed uh, with this specific couple and their planning and investing. Yeah, absolutely. So a little bit of a younger couple. They've got kids that are about to go to college in the next couple of years. So obviously, education expenses was a primary concern. And also diversification was another main highlight, Ryan. Of course, I pulled up her Fidelity account and it was all Fidelity funds. So surprise there. I would say this one was a bit more unique than others is because their asset base is definitely there and through retirement, their numbers look okay. However, the issue was is all their money is locked up in IRAs and qualified investments. So every single time they're going to want to take a withdrawal, whether it be for retirement, whether it be for their kids education, whether it be, you know, potential house somewhere out west, they're going to be hit with a huge tax bill. So here was the main focus of they've got to start building their after tax and taxable savings. So the proverbial their uh, IRAs are going to be a tax time bomb if they don't do something proactive now. And I also have to love the fact that they have their money at one institution, and that institution's selling only their funds or their products. Yeah, surprise no conflict about of that. Interest there. <laughs> well, of course, that would be a great idea if there was one fund company in the country that could outperform the underlying market in every market. Since there's very few, if any, that can outperform any market, it sounds like a really bad idea. What else did you find, Michelle? Well, diversification. They had a decent amount of international, so obviously that's something that I always look for, but no alternatives. So nothing in terms of energy, pipelines, nothing at all. And really, ultimately, that's going to really suffer their performance down the road. And lastly, so little in bonds, it was outrageous. So of course, when we see a big pullback in the markets, they're going to get really hit. Right. So this goes back to something we talked about on the show today. It's you want to have money spread out in, in different baskets, so to speak, not all your eggs in one basket. So by having different types of investments in your portfolio, and the irony is I see here is they have lots of different investments with lots of different financial institutions. And then when you put it right into that, that portal for them, Michelle, you can see, even though they have lots of different names, they all own the same things, which isn't true diversification. No, not at all. And again, when we put it into the portal, they didn't really realize that all their money is locked up in qualified accounts. So every single time they're going to want to take a withdrawal, even for college, they're not even going to be 59 and a half. So they're going to get a penalty when they take the money out of the IRAs or the 401ks. So, you know, you might have the asset base, but those IRAs and 401ks, it takes money to get the, the money out. How about their 529 plans? Are they fully funded? No, they're not fully funded. They're definitely a large shortfall. They actually need to save an additional $35,000 if they both want to send their kids to college. So huge number. Obviously, we're going to work towards that number, Bob, but um, it's reality. You know, the kids get older and older, older every year and college gets more and more expensive. Besides saving for, you know, their personal assets, what can they do about those tax advantage funds, those qualified funds? Well, I think number one is you got to have a longer term plan. Like, for example, a lot of my clients, they choose to maybe dial back working around 60 to 65. And then we always explore Roth conversions because that is probably your 
biggest advantage. And really, I don't recommend Roth conversions for everyone, right? Because that's going to be a large taxable event. But you've got to have, you know, a five, a 10, a 20 year time horizon. So potentially you can get some money out of those IRAs and into Roth IRAs, mm-hmm. which is going to be tax free growth. And yeah, money saved in taxes, just as green as any money can make invested. And it's so important to look at what can I be doing to optimize my tax situation on my portfolio. And clearly nobody's doing that right now. No, it just no one's looking at the bigger picture, right? They they have a collection of investments, but no real plan. I see you also recommended they open up an HSA account. That's a brilliant idea. Yes. So they came to me and they said, I'm so tired of paying money in taxes, right? The HSA, yeah, you know, you can only put in a couple thousand a year, but that couple thousand a year times two people times 10 years times 20 years is a really big savings. Yes, a health savings account. And we don't realize a lot of us were probably eligible for it and don't even know it. And even if you're company doesn't offer a health savings account, there's a good chance you can open one up. So that's something you should definitely be looking at. Someone should be talking about a health savings account. If you're sitting there thinking, what is that? You need to know. That is a, it's a huge tax advantage that most of us aren't taking advantage of. And one other thing I'll mention here, because we talk about as you get closer to retirement, in retirement, you want more reliability with your portfolio. And I'm looking here, Michelle, you estimate that you can increase the income on their portfolio from ten thousand dollars a year to twenty six grand a year, fifteen grand plus a year in cash flow. That's pretty sweet. Yeah, it's free money, <laughs> basically. You know, like the the compounding nature of the market. Einstein said, "The eighth wonder of the world." You're choosing investments that don't have as much cash flow, and you're missing out. Yeah, unbelievable. I mean, just so many different things here, from taxes, diversification that you could be doing and increasing the cash flow in your portfolio. And if you're sitting there thinking to yourself, I need a review like this, this is exactly what our review looks like. And if you're one of the next few callers, we have a couple slots left. Myself, Bob, and Michelle will run for you our total financial master plan, and we'll do it with no obligation or cost, just like this. We'll put everything into one portal. We'll analyze everything in one place, look at what tax advantages you need to be taking advantage of. We're gonna look at diversification. Where is your money spread out? Do you have a lot of the same funds in the same fund company sold by the company that you're working with? Do you have money spread out in different asset classes like international, bonds, commodities, true diversification? What about income? We're able to increase this couple's income by fifteen, sixteen thousand dollars a year. Can we increase the income on your portfolio? And we're gonna look at fees. What hidden costs do you have in your portfolio that need to be reduced? Then we're gonna tie it all together and we're gonna determine is your money gonna outlive you or are you gonna outlive your money utilizing strategies now we've worked on for over forty years to take your family from point A to point B with the least amount of risk and the highest odds of success. Only a few slots left, so give us a call or text us at 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844-752-6692. If you're one of the next few callers, you've saved over 200000 for your retirement. Our team will create for you your own 360 financial portal. Now, give us a call or text 844-PLAN-NYC. That's 844 844- 752-6692. Well, another fantastic show this morning. Miss Michelle, our certified financial planner, one of two certified financial planners we have at Payne Capital. Thank you for being on the show. I appreciate it. My pleasure, Ryan. Yeah. My pleasure. And thank you for sitting next to me after all these years. It's been a while. <laughs> been a long time. <laughs> long time. Big Bob, what's on tap for uh, the weekend or the rest of the weekend? Well, Rye, starting today, um, I'm going on my diet so I can indulge on Thursday for that big Thanksgiving Day feast. <laughs> We're ready, man. We're ready. Well, have a great weekend. And as always, be bullish. Information provided on today's show is provided for information purposes only and does not constitute investment, tax, or legal advice. Information has been obtained from sources that are deemed to be reliable, but their accuracy and completeness cannot be guaranteed. Always consult with an investment, legal, or tax professional before taking any action.